love humans if you have a sony mirrorless camera and you want to use it as a webcam without investing in a capture card like this then keep watching this video so personally i have the sony a6400 but if you have sony a7 III or sony a7s III for that matter but technically if you have sony a7s III you won't mind spending a hundred dollar more on a capture card but like it's your choice if you don't want to spend money on the capture card, which I think you should not, unless you have some specific requirements of streaming in 4K30 or 1080p60, because this method obviously has some restrictions to it as well. So traditionally, you had to use something like this, this is the Elgato CamLink 4K capture card. It is basically just an HDMI to USB converter. And it takes the stream from your HDMI in this case, micro HDMI or mini HDMI, depending on the camera model you have. And then it converts it into a stream which goes into your PC and acts like a webcam. But obviously, if you don't have the budget for it or you, or you just don't want to buy it, then you can now stream without it. But you have to have Sony mirrorless camera. This does not apply to Canon or Nikon or other mirrorless cameras because Sony has always been ahead of the game when it comes to like live streaming and using your camera as a webcam. So that's a good thing. And luckily I do have a Sony camera, obviously Sony 6400. And like if you're on a budget, then A6400 or even like Sony A5100 is a very good option with Sigma 16mm 1.4 lens for this purpose. But that's for another day. So Sony recently released an app called Sony Imaging Edge Webcam, something like that. This is the name of the application. So I thought that why not test this app and make sure that it works without the capture card and I did exactly that and then I thought why not make a video about it. So I did and you're watching this right now. So let's jump onto my system and see how it works. Okay guys, so first of all credit where it's due. I read this information on theverse.com where I saw this announcement that Sony is making it easier to use their DSLR or like digital cameras. To use on windows as webcams so one thing important to note that this is just for windows 10 and not for mac as for now so like so unfortunately there's no mention of mac os right now so sorry apple fans right now you just have to stick to windows if you want to use this feature and there's a complete list of like all of the supported cameras which you can see on the sony support page but like i'm going to go here and these are like one of the most like common set of cameras the sony mirrorless camera which you can use for this purpose and I, right now i have the sony a6400 as i mentioned before so we're just going to what you need to do is just open the application page so this is the software page and you have to first actually i'm going to show you from scratch and just open the imaging edge webcam page just go to the download button here then just select your camera from the list. In my case, it is Sony A6400. Then press the download button again. So after you download the app, the Imaging Edge webcam setup will open after you double click on the file, obviously. And then this is how the setup will look like. I have already installed this, so I will not install it again. Just install it and after installing it, you have to restart your system. So let's go to and read some instructions. So this is the instructions page. I have the Sony A6400, so I'll just go to that setting and ignore all this for now. But you, if you have like Sony um, A7R4 or other cameras, which you can see your list here, you, I mean, obviously you should know the name of your camera from this list and follow the instructions accordingly. If you have the new ZV-1, then you have to do this. But in my case, I just have the Sony A6400 and I'm gonna follow that. So just open your camera, go to your menu, network, and within your wireless settings, basically it's not called wireless on the menu, I actually checked. It's called um, within the network directly, there's a setting known as control with smartphone. So turn that off and then just go to your USB connection within the setup. So within the menu, this the setup icon, go to the USB connection and on the PC remote settings. So in case of PC remote, you actually have to turn this on. So like there's a note here that this operation is not necessary on the models without uh, the smartphone option. So if your camera, my camera did have this option, so I had to do this as well. So what this means is actually that 
if your camera does not have the option for control with smartphone you don't really worry have to worry about this option as well so you just might as well ignore both of these and you will be good to go so next step is obviously to connect with your usb so on your camera on the left side uh, generally there should be a micro usb cable option which says multi on it um, it's technically a multi usb so connect that micro usb port to the one side to the camera the other side to the your laptop or your pc whatever you want to use it on as a webcam and then after that the next step is obviously uh, so th ignore this step technically this is the launch the live description and web content service so basically it means that just launch the application which you want to use which whether it's skype or zoom or obs or whatever that is and then after that so in my case i just om opened the camera app and it was working fine i'm not uh, going to open it right now here because the lighting in my room is not that good so i will not uh, open it right now but anyways so one important thing to note here is the aspect ratio so the aspect ratio they said it will be automatically converted to 16 16 ratio 9 so this is the aspect ratio which will change into the camera when it connects to the um, this webcam application and it will stay 16 by 9 even if when you stopped using it as a webcam so make sure to turn it back to the aspect ratio of your own settings when you're like trying to record a video or something so that like just something to point out and I personally use 16 by 9 anyway, so it does not bother me, but in your case, it might be important. So there are some precautions here, which you might be able to read. I will link all of these links, all three of these links in the description below of the video. So please uh, open them and have a look for yourself if you want to go into some details. And there are some FAQ as well. So like that's pretty straightforward, obviously. You just have to download the software, change two settings on your camera, then just connect to your laptop and then just open your application whichever you want to use is as a webcam and it will just start working and i think so i read it somewhere here that it has a limitation of yeah here it is so the resolution this is the limitation i was talking about earlier the resolution is set to one one or two four into five seven six i think so it's like almost like even below 720p so the resolution would not be that great but it should be fine because usually your webcam is um, on the bottom right on bottom left in a small scale if you're game streaming so it, it does not bother me that much but if you want to do like look really professional and, and the highest quality possible auto of your camera then then go ahead and just buy the Elgato Cam Link 4K which will give you a 4K resolution up to 30 FPS or 1080p resolution with up, up to 60 FPS so that's also a good option as well so as expected as you saw yourself this application worked for me on the very first try and that's a good sign. So obviously you don't have to buy the Elgato capture card or like black magic capture card or any capture card for that matter unless you want to stream in 4K resolution or 1080p resolution for that matter because obviously this software is still new and it has its limitations. And one important thing to note is make sure you, you like plug your camera into a USB 3.0 Gen 2 or whatever it, whatever that is, that does not really matter. But it has to be used with USB 3.0 for stability. I mean, that's not listed on the Sony website or their or their manual, but that's like something I personally noticed that it's much more stable on the USB 3.0 port. So make sure you do that. So if this video did help you in any way or form, please like this video and subscribe to my channel if you are new here. And let me know if you want me to do more tutorials like this because I thought like there's something helpful. I should also do that apart from the B-rolls which I usually do on my channel. So let me know about that. And also if you want to share this video so that it can help other people as well, that would be great for the YouTube algorithm. And I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.